you talked about Sugar Shaw and O'Malley. Is it official? Like, have you signed a contract? Is this all going down at UFC 292 in Boston on August 19th? Man, if I tell you guys when I signed these other contracts, like the actual date of when I signed them, like the contract is all formality type of thing. So when people look at that, I think people are looking too deep into what that actually is. It's it's not like the contract doesn't really mean anything. I say I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. You know what I mean? Uh, literally signing the contract to me doesn't really matter much. It's just more of a like legally binding versus anything. If that makes more sense, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, well, we'll as of right now, the, that's that's the fight. What does a win over Sean O'Malley do for your career, for your legacy? We talked about Henry Cejudo, and you talk about some of the other wins that you've had in the past. What's at stake here for you? Obviously, what's at stake for him is to become a UFC bantamweight champion. But what does a, a win over he- uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley do for you? I think it just adds another notch in the belt. That's that's really it. It's not like this this name in particular is just a very popular name with the young kids who are playing Fortnite and things like that. Kids that like to sit home, smoke weed, and tattoo their faces. Um, so that generation of people that, you know, kind of like the rebels, I guess. Um, in terms of what it does for me. I mean, the Henry win versus O'Malley win is two completely different things. One is just a competition. The other one is a competition and legacy and accolades. The other one is more just competition and maybe eyeball value. That's that's really it. But in the sense of sport, um, he's still a young buck in this game. Whether or not he's been tested, I, I think we got to give him the nod now with the the win over Piotr Jan. And although I still, I'm like, I watched that fight again and I kind of gave the nod to Piotr after watching it again. I'm just like, I don't know. I think that one is actually a split decision because I feel like depending on what you're looking at could kind of sway your perception or decision on who you think should get the nod. It was a very close fight. And I think the Sugar Show has arrived. But again, there's levels to this man. He hasn't fought anyone who's a high level grappler. He hasn't fought anyone of his same size. He hasn't fought someone who's as strong as him. Or stronger, I should say. And I think when he steps in there with a beast like myself, it's going to be completely different. He's going to realize really, really quickly that, as I say what it is, it's there's levels to this. Um, he can say whatever he wants about my striking and you better, you look like shit tonight. You better look better than that. Hey, there's a reason why everyone looks at me on tape and they think what they think. And as soon as that cage door locks and we lock up, it's completely different. What looks like it's going to be an easy target. It's a lot harder for them to hit in real time. And I think that's the difference. It might not look pretty when you're watching it from your seats, but there's something special happening in there. And me and my opponents, we always tend to see and figure that out. And Sean's going to be no different. When he gets in there with me, he's going to realize I'm harder to hit than he thought and harder to hit than he expected. He's going to realize that I'm stronger than he expected. And uh, I'm as good as I say I am. Have you been impressed with what he's been able to do outside of the cage in terms of the marketability you know building his name building his brand you know there's a lot of fighters out there in various divisions that are on like six seven eight fight win streaks that aren't sniffing a title shot and i think sugar sean o'malley has been able to do a lot of that with the the persona and the personality that he's built here with you i i don't even know what persona that is man i listen to him talk and some of the stuff and, and it's just this bland monotone thing and i'm like i don't see what the hype is isn't this him and connor what people were comparing him oh he's the next connor i'm like where there is nothing what connor brings to the table in terms of persona wittiness charisma sean doesn't have any of that the only thing he has is a, a i guess an exciting fight style because he's a stand-up artist but when's the last time he actually ko'd somebody when he actually fought someone of merit he fought Pedro Munoz and couldn't help himself but poking his eyes out. He fought Piotr Jan and it was a split decision. He barely got out of that. Um, and then what's the other one? He fought Cheeto and he flunked that test. You know, I'm not saying those are fights from the past. Like, yes, you're going to get older. You're going to get experience. You're going to get better. But in terms of what he's actually done, I mean, like, I'm only calling it how I see it. He's got a long, tough hill to climb. And if he thinks cutting the line to get there is going to hide those imperfections and those insecurities... I'm going to be that boogeyman on August 19th and I'm going to make him look at himself in the mirror and take a deep breath and realize you have to now face who you think that you are and you're going to have to see that reflection 
in the in the version of Aljamain Sterling, you know, and that's just what it is. Again, like what he's done outside of that personality persona, that shit don't matter when the cage door locks. Yeah, good for him. I'm glad he's making money on YouTube. I'm glad his YouTube channel is doing well. Um, I would like to take some notes if I'm being honest. Uh, and and catch up to him but it seems like what people like about his channel and what they like about mine is like i'm giving you the realness he's giving you more like i don't even know him and of uh, red hawk over there i i don't know it's like if you want the real deal you come over to the real show you see what i'm saying if you want real insight you go to henry you go to myself you go to who else volkanovsky you go to real people who's actually giving you real value with him it just seems like more entertainment versus anything and even that entertainment factor for me is very subpar so i think the kids just like him because of the tattoos on his face and his hair is colored and he looks like a rebel it almost gives him like that oh he not he doesn't that's kind of how i want to live my life i can relate to this guy but that ain't the real life guys kids you're gonna have to eventually grow up and get a real job <laughs> you know so unless you're gonna come to mma and start fighting hey Hey, to each his own. That's all I can say. I'm not hating on the guy. Go get your money, Sean. I hope we both make a lot of money together. But at the end of the day, I'm coming in there to do one thing, and that's to smash the f this guy. Yeah, when I spoke to Henry about breaking this fight down, he said it's you know it's gonna be very very easy for you. He he sees that you just take him down, ground and pound, and it's done in like you know within the first round. Is that how you potentially see this fight playing out? I think that's the difference between Henry and I. You know, as as well accomplished as he is, he calls fights easy. I don't call any fight easy. The last time I called a fight easy, I was staring up at the ceiling and I didn't come to my senses until I woke up in the hospital and that was against Marlon Moraes. And ever since then, what happened? You know what I mean? You know, I was good before, but I think that just kind of awoken me to a new level. Like, you got to respect everybody. And that's why I respect Sean's game. I know what he brings to the table, but I think on paper, I bring a completely nightmare stylistic matchup to him. And it's up to me to go out there and make sure that happens. Yeah, I should be able to go out there and just walk him down, take him down. But that's not the game. He's got really good footwork. He's really long and lanky. He's actually got a longer reach than I do. He's taller. The difference is, though, just like Sanhagen and a guy like Jimmy Rivera, Henry Sayudo, short and compact, harder to get underneath them and take them down versus a guy who's tall and lanky. It's more so me slipping, covering up, taking a shot or two, getting inside, closing that distance, getting my hands locked, and then from there, just folding them. And I think that's that's the game plan. But again, easier said than done. He's got really good footwork, and if you ever try to shoot on someone who's moving, it's extremely difficult. So I got to make sure I'm not running into anything. But again, if I do my homework, I see the feints come in, and I draw out his attack the right way, or he freezes up and second guesses himself and allows me to close that gap, yeah, that's just a short night. I was going to ask, how is the the weight cut to 135 these days? Because every time I see you, you're looking more ripped, more jacked, more muscular, more, you look stronger physically every time you step into the cage. How how much longer do you think you can sustain uh, a career at bantamweight before you have inevitably have to move up? Uh, I'm going to say win or learn, this is probably my last fight at bantamweight. So you're getting the good, you're getting the scoop on that first. Um, more than likely is, and it's not, if I, even if I were to learn and I didn't get my hand raised, it, it damn sure ain't because of Hen, uh, Sean O'Malley running me out of the division. It's more so this getting old, man. It, it hurts. You think I wouldn't like to just turn around, but like, yeah, I could turn around and go fight 145 and go fight three months, three and a half months later, which is pretty much what this fight is. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the weight cut and it's kind of disingenuous and kind of, um, Kind of a, I'm going to call it what it is, a real tactic to want to say openly to people like, yeah, I know that weight cut's going to be hard for him to turn around and do it again that fast. And I know he's still going to be banged up coming into this one. So yeah, we, we know it's going to be a tough fight, but we know th these things going in. That's some real If it's me, I want to fight you at your best. Not when I can feel like I could get you when you're weak. Yeah. Some people might say it's smarter to do that. Yeah, it is tactically. But you get no respect for that. And if you go out there and get smashed, even having those advantages going in, bro, you should reevaluate your career and see what you really want to do. You know what I mean? So that's my mentality going in. You want to take the, the easy road and, and try to be a little to get somebody in there faster um, because you know you're going to have those, those advantages because I just came out of a really tough fight with Henry. I banged up myself beating the crap out of Henry more than he's did to me. You know, so Henry's over here jumping at the bit. 
ah, if he doesn't want to fight, I'll jump in undercutting me and trying to be like this hero when all it does is make you look weak. You, 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 you take away any, I, I, I'm not even going to go into that, but he's doing himself a disservice by saying that. And I, I'll just leave it at that. Henry going out there and saying, throwing his, let the opportunity come. Don't, don't start running your mouth and saying things that you don't need to say, because at the end of the day, the only person that you hurt is yourself. But I'll leave, I'll leave that at that and let people kind of take their time and use their brain to kind of figure out what that means. But um, yeah, this, like I said, when I learn, this is probably more than likely my last one at bandwidth. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. And hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, give me some feedback, let me know what you think, share the video with your friends, help me blow this whole thing up. And hey, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more conversations, more interviews, and more amazing video content coming soon.